All right, I want to welcome in everybody to Bayhawks basketball here on FR Media. How are you doing, everybody? I'm David Cadoza. Alongside me is the infamous Portuguese cowboy himself, Craig Salvador. Lucy Cabral on the camera work. And we're getting underway from Bishop Connolly as Juan Espinal, number one there, lays it in for the Bayhawks. How you doing, Craig? I am doing quite good on this afternoon, evening, night, whatever time of day it is. <laughs> well, you are the, yeah, exactly. And that, that was a three-pointer just drained by number three, Darius Hall. All right, you're watching Bayhawks basketball. It is the Bristol Community College Bayhawks hosting Quincy College. The Granite. And Quincy College, Craig, they are 19 and 0. 19 they, and 0. They are 19 and 0 in the conference, in the region, and 19 and 1 overall. They have one loss. And they were the team that knocked off BCC. BCC started off 11 and 0, and Quincy College beat them at home earlier in the season to give BCC their first loss. Quincy College is the number one team. According to Rob Delu, they're the number one team in the country right now in this division, Division Three, JUCO. And they're the top team in Region 21. Again, we are at LaFrance Gymnasium, home of the Bishop Conley High School Cougars, and also the home of your Bristol Community College Bayhawks. Thanks for joining us here on FR Media. And it is three to two, so we're just getting underway, three to two. And the uh, the host, the Grant, I mean the host, uh, Bayhawks down by one. Yeah, Bayhawks looking for a big win. They didn't uh, came up just short on student night last week, so looking for a big win against Quincy tonight. Yeah, they got upset on student night. And a very surprising victory. They lost against. Um, refresh my memory. Got early Alzheimer's. <laughs> <laughs> No, they lost. They lost on student night against Gateway Community College from Connecticut. They lost 89 to 77. And Gateway Gateway Community College came into that contest with only six victories. Yeah, and something I didn't realize is the last time BCC actually played Gateway, I believe they won by only one point. So it was a close one in the last game, before the game on student night. And again, I guess the record uh, record doesn't always show the talent. Because again, Gateway played exceptionally well, well. Well, they beat Gateway Community College on November 28th, 78 to 72. And going, driving the lane and laying it in is going to be number 10, DeJour Dunkley. 5 to 2. BCC coming out in their offense. Quincy College in a 2-3 zone. Wimbush catches it, gives it to Vega, and he gets blocked. What a block there. And taking it the other way, going all the way to the hole strong, and getting fouled by Juan Espinal is Devin Palmer. Yeah, Devin Palmer on the fast break, just going to the hoop. No regards for his body. He went full speed the entire time and caught a bit of Juan Espinal on the go. Yep, Juan Espinal is... First foul there. It's already One. three team foul. Is, is, that has to be wrong. There's no way BCC already has three fouls. Has <laughs> three, yeah, three team fouls in less than two minutes. That's what we have on our scoreboard here. Six to two. And BCC trying to avenge a loss. Like I said earlier in the season, they lost to Quincy College, who gave them their first loss at that point in the season. They were, BCC rattled off 11 straight wins to, uh, to start the season off. And Quincy College, when they played back, when they played back when, on December 9th, it was a 91 to 88 game at Quincy College. So BCC hung with them, going all the way to the lane and laying it in. It's number 20, number 34. I'm sorry. Our weekly um, mystery player. There's always at least one of them. <laughs> Process of elimination, right? Yep. <laughs> and he completes a three-point play. So 9-2, to two, Quincy College off to a good start. And when they did play back in um, December, Craig, remember, BCC had all of its players 
cut into the basket. On the pass from Vega, I'm mean, sorry, but the pass from Winbush, Vega misses the, lay, misses the layup. That's a deep three off the rim, tipped. Quincy Collins with the offensive rebound. Loose ball. Oh, Vega just rips it away, though. Yeah, Vega swoop it to the hoop. Misses. Oh, miscue, miscue. Oh, my God, the follow missed as well. Going back the other way. Quincy Collins with the numbers, corner three. No good. Rebounded by Alexander Holloway. I'm sorry, Alex Holloway. Stolen again. Quincy Collins with the basketball, going to the hole and getting fouled. And that is the fourth team foul. Craig, I think you're wrong. I think BCC's been, uh, they got some uh, frequent flyer miles with the fouls right now. Yeah, the, the uh, counter keeps going up, so I guess it is true. They do have this many fouls so far, five the, yeah. within three minutes. Yeah, the proof is in the pudding. And there's 17-17 uh, to play. That was one of the worst stuff. Uh, Free throws I've ever seen. How do you how do you miss right there? It's the side bit, of the backboard. Just a bit off. Just yeah. a bit outside. I can see you throw an air ball more than that. Alexander Holloway will come out. Juan Espinal goes out. Caleb Provitt, number 23, will come in. And also Mitchell. Malik Mitchell. Malik Muhammad Hester. I got Mitchell on the brain. Hmm. And the free throw was sunk. I like the song from the crowd. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know if those Quincy, uh, Quincy fans or, or uh, BCC fans I'm inside. Gonna get, I'm going to guess BCC. They're doing it as the Quincy players at the free throw line. Caleb Provitt was going to inbound. Now it's going to be Corey Green. Fifteen on the shot clock right now. Quincy Collins playing pretty good defense here to stop the game off. Now and knocked away. Nice steal. Fast break. Nice spin move. From the perimeter. No good. Misses by Jonathan DeViga. Now up ahead, pushing it up. Another almost another turnover. Wimbush going baseline. Oh, nice move there. Puts it up off the glass. And they're gonna call a foul on Quincy College. That's only their first of the uh, first of the half compared to BCC's five. Yeah, it's going to be on the mystery player there, number 34. Yeah, Quincy College, they come in with an impressive record. And they're going to have to be dealt with come uh, postseason time. Quincy College, 19-0. In conference play, 19-1 overall. The number one team in BCC. That would be a huge upset and a great win to get on their resume as Winbush hits the second part of his free throws there, 10 to three. BCC playing zone, that's something that they do very often. Yeah, I remember early in the season, it was a lot of man defense. Now I've been changing it to a lot of zone in the second half of the season. Yeah, floater over Winbush. Now, Quincy resets. Three-pointer, it's good. Man, that was right in Hester's face, eyeballs. Shot by Jonathan DeVega. BCC looking stagnant on the offensive end. Winbush passes it up to Hester. Hester can't get it to go. And then Winbush off the rebound, off the miss with the putback, 13 to five. BCC is a three-pointer. No good. Rebounded by Winbush, and he got fouled on the rebound. And it's going to be another foul on number 34, I believe, his second. So BCC is trying to get their chemistry issues down, Craig. A little bit of chemistry issues in the second half of the season. Even though they did win seven straight prior to the last game. Cross court pass. Mitchell steps back in the corner. Jumper's good. Good job there by Malik Muhammad Hesta. And as uh, 
as poor as BCC's played here early on. Here's a drive to the hole, going strong right by Winbush. Devin Palmer going back the other way as Vega. He'll lay it in. He'll respond to that. Nice response going back the other way. And BCC now getting a few good possessions that might get their offense to start going. And that's what they need, and yeah, that ball goes out of bounds. This is something they really do need. Fifteen to nine. We're just getting started here on a Tuesday night in February. Oh, Winbush, <laughs> Winbush thought about three. I don't think he's taken a three this entire season. I'm not sure if he has. Corey Viega for three coming off. Winbush, Winbush going to go back up with that. Look at Winbush just reaching over the defender. That's all he needed to do. Going back the other way and out of bounds. You know, Winbush, instead of carrying that ball back out and shooting it, why don't you just go right back up with it? Take it to the hole. You've got inches on these boys. Devin Palmer. It's the only guy that slightly perhaps matches up with you. He's 6'5". Quincy get a lot of players who, who are from the Boston area, obviously. Quincy College in the Boston area. A lot of guys from Dorchester, Hyde Park, Raintree. Going inside is Winbush. Can't connect. And then I think that was uh, Winbush on his own uh, follow-up there. Tips it in. 15 to 11, and BCC has climbed back into this thing. Three-pointer. No good. Oh, Provit rebounded it, but stepped on the baseline. Tried to save it, but just couldn't uh, couldn't in time before he stepped out of bounds. We see number 12 in blue. That's Regis Caesar checking it in for Quincy. Yep, Quincy College, if you just joined us, in the royal blue. And knocked away, Caleb Provit pushing it ahead. Vega, one man to beat, swoops to the hoop, lays it in. And BCC offensively getting back in with doing what they do. Three-pointer is drained by Devin Palmer. Quincy's got some shooters on their team. And they definitely do. I think I've identified the mystery player. I think it's uh, this guy. It's, uh, he's marked as 33. I think it's really 34. Hugo Kamalu. Number's close, and he is just about, he's listed at 6'4", makes him just about as tall as Devin Palmer. <laughs> I saw him standing Polo next check. to each other. They're about the same size. 18 to 13, we'll be right back after this. You're watching Bayhawks Basketball on FR Media. Welcome back, everybody. Bayhawks basketball here on FR Media. It's David Cardoza, and alongside me is Craig Salvador. And doing the fancy camera work is our own Lucy Cabral. Sorry, Lucy, no national anthem tonight, but we'll catch you next time. It's the C team, a.k.a. the Dream Team. And uh, Bristol Community College, top 25 team. They have been all year. Second. They are second in... Region 21 at 18 and 2, 18 to 5 overall, not too bad. Inside, Muhammad Hester, nice handoff there, nice dish to Vega, who lays it up the glass and in. And BCC, after a little bit of a slow start and a shaky start, especially offensively, they're down only three. I think Palmer got away with some, with uh, travel. There's offensive rebound, driving to the lane. Wow, I don't know how Quincy has not lost the ball yet. And that was a lucky roll. They're playing kickball over here. They'll go inside. Wimbush flops. He flopped. I think he's going to pick. It's, it's uh, going to be an Hester, offensive. Yeah, yeah oh, Hester gets Hester. the call. Hester, I'm sorry. And that's what we talked about Hester and the little things that he does like that. That's He's a big, big solid body, not afraid to mix it up down there and Take, take charges, do the little dirty things. Hey, you can give him the Academy Award, but it works. 
Yeah, that was, you know, I, yeah, I give them all the credit in the world for that. That was a, that was a great job there. Provitt tees it up for three, no good. Coming off and the rebound by Quincy College. That was Devin Palmer with the rebound. Driving all the lanes, swooping it up. Can't get it to go. Kayla Provitt pushes up on the wing. Vega going all the way. Oh, rebounded by Joshua Winbush. Puts it in. And Craig, this is what BCC needs to do. They are bet they are at best when they are in, when they are pushing the ball up the court when their tempo is just up and down. They're not they're not as strong as a half quarter team as some of these other teams, but they are they are at best when they are getting the rebound and they're pushing up court and they're looking to go right to the hole, and that tempo needs to be upbeat, and we're seeing that right now. Yeah, we always talk about that speed is this team's strength, and they are very good on the fast break, and that is a good example right there. Turning defense into offense, especially. Off the inbound and put in is Devin Palmer. In the corner is Vega for three, drains it. Boom! Corey Vega and BCC up 22 to 18 against the number one team in the country. Cross court pass. 15 on the shot clock. BC locking up on offense, defense. That was an errant, I don't know what, the, what that was, a pass or a shot, but no, nice pass. The putback, and it's good. You can't give Quincy those second and third attempts right there. You know, we saw, I believe that was Devin Palmer. You know, he was going up and down all day for that. Got like three, four rebounds. Yeah, if you, yeah. You, can't give, um, you can't give this team second and third chances. And uh, Devin, Paul, Devin Palmer... Hills is six foot five from Hyde Park. And he's got range. He's got range, uh, Craig. He can hit for he looks like he can hit from the outside. He can drive. He can mix it up inside there and score in the interior and do the little things. He's like a in, good inside outside player. Reminds me a little bit of uh, him and his Fox last year from Mass Bay. Which one? The bigger one. The bigger one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little bit more athletic, though. 22-20, hmm. the guests, Quincy College, they lead. And the free throw was good, and that completes the three-point play. The foul was on Hester, and that was his first. Corey Green tees it up from deep. No good. Quincy College with the rebound. They're going to call a foul right there at number 10, Corey Vega. Josh Wimbush is going to come out. And looks like coming in is going to be Arda Koban, the freshman from Turkey. He'll come in. Also, Damian Martin is in, number two. Corey Green and um, Corey, uh, Corey Green and Zachary Vega. The only starters out there right now for BCC. Right now, Quincy College in that zone. Corey Green floats it up, and they're going to call it travel. 23 to 20, 11.04 to play in the first half. There's a three, no good, coming off. Muhammad Hester with the rebound. You look, you're watching two top 25 teams in the NJCAA. Cross court pass, Damian Martin's gonna tee it up for three. Can't get it to fall. Oh, nice rebound by Zachary Vega. Reach it back, but couldn't put it back. And now, in the corner, the three. The southpaw drains it. And he looks at the crowd. The jour, Dunkley. I think he's got the coolest name out there right now. <laughs> Hoop de jour. That's Stolen. Three on one. They got the numbers. And that's what a top team in the country does. Execute the fast break. They lay it in. Going back the other way, Corey Green puts it high off the glass. 
and they're going to call a foul. It's going to be on Quincy College. Right at the line, CG3, Corey Green. And look who we have back here, Greg. Marcus Mitchell. Marcus Mitchell is back. Haven't seen him in a while. It's good to see him back, though. Great outside shooter. And yeah. had a very good first half of the season. I think this is the first time we've seen him back, at least at home. I forgot what Marcus Mitchell looks like. That might not even be him. I He's <laughs> listed on the roster sheet, but I saw him, and I was like, no, wait, no. who is that? I, was like, I remember that Marcus Mitchell. I remember that flat top from anywhere. Cut it through the defense like a Swiss army knife. Shot couldn't get to fall. Hustling out of bounds. And it's going to be BCC basketball. Twenty-eight to twenty-two. A lot of time left in this one, obviously. So, Craig, you and I were out there after after uh, the game last week against Gateway on Student Night, and we were, you know, uh, out there on the court, three-point contest. There's so many. Dead spots on that court. This court is awful. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how these guys play on it. It's just like a, there'll be a spot where it, the ball won't even dribble. Legit. Reverse lay-in by Baker is good. Nice wherewithal to know where he is underneath the basket and put that up high up the glass. Beautiful shot by Zachary Vega. Three-point shot. Drains it home. Devin Palmer, the inside-outside threat. Getting it done, 31-24, to 24. Yeah, man. Devin, yeah, Devin Palmer, he's doing a little bit of everything here in the early going. We have a timeout on the court, but it's not relegated to a team. I believe it's just a referee, referee's timeout here. Yeah, they're having some issues with the clock earlier and then the fouls, number of fouls, so I don't know if this has to do with it, but. Yeah, now, well, now Coach Rob Delu is called a full timeout, I believe, so. Timeout on the court. BCC has 18 fouls. Wow. With 9.14 left to play, that means Quincy College, that means BCC is in the penalty, so Quincy College will be shooting free throws for the rest of the half. Right now at a one-on-one -on -one situation, 14 fouls for the Granite. Quincy College Granite, and boy, have they been Granite. They've been a solid team. Um, one of the top teams around, obviously, the top team around. And... Um, yeah, so BCC, this this could be a this could be a huge game. This is a huge game. They can win this game. I mean, that just shows they can beat anybody. That means that you could go to the national tournament and have a good shot as anybody, you know, to come out of that tournament successfully with well, a championship. Yeah, this game, if BCC can pull up a win. It's going to be huge and just build a lot of momentum going forward. Yeah, and they came so close to beating them um, back in December. Obviously, this is a two totally different teams, right? Two months later, BCC is definitely a different team. But they have most of their guys. I mean, they have most of their guys. And Marcus Mitchell coming back, that's obviously huge, especially, especially offensively. Yeah, I remember uh, last, uh, yeah, during the first half of the season, it was really, it was uh, Mitchell... Green along with Steven Torres and occasional other people who are really the outside threats. Ever since the second half, it's really just been Corey Green and of all things, Zachary Vega really from the outside. Wasn't expecting that, but again, Corey Green was kind of the only. He's going back the other way, landed up, no good. Corey Green was kind of really the only outside shooter on this team, but now with having Marcus Mitchell back, that's going to be big. Definitely is, and Marcus Mitchell, speaking to him, that was his first shot, no good, but. Probably going to shake some of that rust off. Off the inbound pass, no good. But he's going to get fouled. Devin Palmer. Devin Palmer will go back to line for two. 19 fouls now for the, for the uh, home team there, the Bayhawks. 
Alexander Holloway and Josh Winbush look like they're going to come and check in for BCC. First free throw was made. And uh, Corey Green and Zachary Vega will come out. Alexander Holloway, number three and number four. The six foot seven freshman from Lake Charles, Louisiana, Joshua Winbush, is in as well. And they get their two twin towers out there. Both free throws made. Such a sound player that Devin Palmer. 33 to 24. From the France Gymnasium. The top team in the country, Quincy College, going against BCC. And that ball is stolen by who else? Devin Palmer caused a turnover. Oh, nice pass inside. That was a great pass. Couldn't get it to go, though. Yeah, nice little flip pass. Now we have a loose ball. And taken away, Damian Martin. So small amongst those trees. Nice pass there. The dish to Coban from Marcus Mitchell. Getting it started was Damian Martin. Good ball movement there. Coban finishes, and it's 33 to 26. Coming up on May, eight minutes to play in the first half. BCC hanging in there. Now being double teamed. Three point shot from the wing is good. Jonathan De Vega for the trifecta. BCC calling that offense on the zone there. Not a good pass by Coban. Coming back the other way. That ball deflected off Damian Martin. Damian Martin with the deflection. Knocking it out of bounds. Still going to remain the granite basketball. Corey Green will come in for Damian Martin. Corey Green, number 15. And Corey Green, really one of the top shooters on this team. I think he struggled here the last few times you've seen him, Craig. In the corner, high shot, no good. Rebound by Coban. The swing it. CG, three for three. That's what we want to see. That's his spot, Craig. When he gets that, when he gets that ball on that wing over there, that's like a. That's his shot. That it is. Yeah, you said Corey Green did have a little bit of struggle early on half in the second half of the season. Had a great first half of the season. He's looking to turn it around. And there's Mitchell going to the hole. Had the direct pass to the basket and going back the other way and scoring off the long pass is Don Jonathan De Vega. Oh, nice no-look pass to Holloway, Ste stepping in. Winbush follows his own miss and puts it back up and in. Okay. Quincy College will call a timeout. 38 to 31, 6.25 to play from LaFrance Gymnasium in Fall River. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you like sports, you like Boston sports. A little bit depressing over here the last couple days since uh, Super Bowl 52. But like I said, if you like Boston sports, we're talking all about it on the Dirty Water Sports Hour podcast. You can catch our podcast on SoundCloud. They are posted. And you can go on there, search the Dirty Water Sports Hour, click on it. And uh, we we'll just recorded our latest show today, talking all about Super Bowl 52. Be looking for that podcast as well as last week's podcast. Pre and post Super Bowl podcast. And unfortunately, did not go the way that we wanted it here in New England. Patriots losing, but it's all about basketball now, Mr. Salvador. That it is. We got BCC and on the Dirty Water yeah, Sports Hour talking yeah, Celtics. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We're in the we're we're amping up. It's February is a big month. Yep. It's getting first. close to nitty gritty time. That's right. Wimbush. Rainbow jumper. No good. Rebounded by Devin Palmer. Palmer crosses over. Gets it to the lane. Puts it up and in. Beautiful move. Crossing him up and get to the lane. He showed us that he could score in a variety of ways. Deep three. MM. No good. Mitchell has missed two from downtown. Rebombos by Kamalu. Hey, 
And I, and I said that DeJore Dunkley has the coolest name. Well, he actually probably does. But the, the, the uh, this other name, Yugochu, Yugocha, if I can never say it. Well, I'm just going to call him like Kamala. Well, they have him marked down as Yugo on the sheet. Just say Yugo. Yugo yeah. Kamalu. That could be a cool name, too. In the corner for three, Jonathan DeVega. I tell you, this Quincy team is deadly from the outside. But they Corey are. Green looking to be Gigi just as deadly. Green. The color of money. Green. Green shoes and all. Actually, everybody's got green shoes out there except for Winbush with the white. Yeah, Winbush going with the all-white style. Going to the hole, trying to reverse it. Vega blocked it. Look at Vega putting on a defensive showcase. Yeah. Back-to-back -back blocks. And BCC comes away with the turnover. Vega, oh, Holloway oh. to Vega. Oh, oh. you got to make it. You that gotta make a, that. That was an amazing pass from yeah, Holloway. Yeah, that was great. Deep three. Oh, my M G for three. None other than Devin Palmer. Man. Green stops. Pops misses. Frustration for the Bayhawks. Three pointer. It's good. Jonathan Tavega for another three, 49 to 34. And BCC needs to call a timeout. And Man, I tell you, this Jonathan Tavega and Devin Palmer combination just been absolute fire from the outside so far. It looks like, the, and doesn't it look like they'll just tee it up from anywhere? They don't care if there's a defender, if there's a hand in their face, they are getting it done and they, I mean, they're just draining threes all over the place. It, it, it doesn't matter if it's contested or not. They're teeing it up. They're creating just a little bit of space to get that ball up, like Curry, Curry style, as you say. Yeah, just doing it all over the court. Doesn't matter if it's in the corner, at the top of the key, at the angle. Again, if there's a defender in their face, they are just doing it from all over the court. Doesn't matter where. They have just been putting on a show early on. It has been a showtime. Looking like the Warriors, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know? Very impressed by Devin Palmer. I mean, he's been a beast inside, you know, on the perimeter, taking it to the basket, getting inside, mixing it up, posting up, getting inside, scoring, rebounding, doing a little bit of everything. Like you said, that John DeVega just teeing it up from, like, anywhere and just nailing shots. Really, that's been the main offense. When you talk about offense, Offensive contributions to Vega and Palmer, they've been they carried they've carried the bulk of the offense and the firepower for uh, for Quincy. Holloway with the basketball. Mitchell. Holloway, that's his shot, and he makes it. Holloway loves that long two pointer, and he gets it to go on that instance. He, he does, like right from the free throw line, right from the elbow, as you call it. 49 to 36. Holloway. Ooh. Ooh nice move. Very, very smart by Alex Holloway. Oh, a great move by Bristol's point guard. I almost wanted to give him a clap right there. That was excellent. That was a great job. He jumped out of bounds. He knew he wasn't going to be able to get it to one of his teammates, but he had the wherewithal just to throw it off of one of Quincy's players. And this gives the Bayhawks a possession. And every possession counts. So, yeah, that was a big. That was a big play. That is one of the smartest plays you might see today. It's time for Wimbush to stop being lazy and start getting on the block down there and start, uh, start dominating. Actually, we had, um, we had a chance to talk to some of the, uh, the players from um, Gateway Community College after the last game. I'm not going to say who said it, but they called Josh Wimbush a little bit soft, and to hear that, and to know how great this player is, you know, it was a. Uh, definitely something to take into account. Just think he's being a little bit inconsistent. Sometimes we'll see him get the ball on the block or near the basket. And, and go with a strong move, but sometimes 
he plays too unselfish and he comes out and he wants to play point and he wants to pass it. I just think nine times out of ten, he's the biggest, you know, he's going to be the biggest guy in the court. And that free throw is made. 50 to 36. Three and a half minutes to play. I'll tell you, when BCC gets in this half court set, it's like well, they just the get a deer in the headlights and go in there, back the other way. Look at that speed. The dish. The put. Oh, the laying is no good. Too bad. Spoiled the dish by Darius Hall. Darius Hall looks like he shot out of a cannon when he brings the ball up court. Yeah, very explosive player. We've seen him on those steals, and he's just he's just hauling all the way up. And a good job. He has good court vision too. He knows when to pass, when he has a defender on him, and where his teammates are. Yeah, he definitely leads the charge, leads the break. And he's gonna he might be one of those unsung heroes because you, we've been talking about Devin Palmer and DeVega the whole time. Oh, nice going to the hole, and nobody covered him on the pass from Winbush. Caleb Provitt lays it in, 50 to 38. Yeah, Provitt just had a clear lane the entire time. So nobody on him. Definitely did. Oh, back in the corner. Back in the corner. Look at the unselfishness. Three-pointer, no good. Going back the other way. Here comes Holloway. Holloway lobs it in. Winbush. Oh, gets a block, but he gets fouled. And Devin Palmer. Tough defensive play, but he did get. Did get a piece of Winbush, and Winbush will go to the line. Now Palmer's second foul of the team six. Next one puts BCC in the bonus. Correction, one more, one more for the bonus. Because seven, seven is the magic number. That's what I said. Oh, did you? Oh, one yeah, more. I said, oh, I said one, one more. more for the bonus. Oh, one more. I'm... My apologies. Good. Need the apologies. <laughs> I need my credit, damn it. <laughs> I definitely do. That's why you're the phenomenal one. <laughs> BCC with that trap. Like to see them be more aggressive. Go into the hole. Wow. Uh, Palmer looked like he got kind of caught in the headlights, but he saw a lane and just took it. Yeah, going the other way. Using his body, but Vega misses. Coming up away with his Palmer. Darius Dunkley swooping to the hoop, lays it up and in. Wimbush couldn't get to him. 54 to 40. Where's the defense for BCC? Wimbush catches it. Nice pass to Vega. Lays it in strong. Way to go by Wimbush. Had the Quincy College player collapsed on him. Dished it off calmly to Vega, who laid it up and in. Dunkley with the basketball. Lost it, but regaining possession. There's a three-pointer, no good. And Wimbush, he's going to get fouled by Hugo. Over the back. Yep, so we take the long march down the other court for Wimbush to shoot one and one. Yep, there's that seventh foul. So both teams in the bonus. Quincy College, they'll be shooting two free throws from here on out. They're in the double bonus, as BCC has 10 team fouls. Quincy College has seven. Quincy College has seven team fouls. And Winbush misses the front of the one and one Yeah, Hester's scheduled to check in. He's got to wait a little bit longer now. Kicking it back out. There's a three, and it's good! That was Dunkley from three. Double D for three. Going around the back seat. Winbush just went. Oh, nice. That's a nice pass, though. They're going to call it travel. Ooh. Ooh, that's too bad because that was a hell of a pass by Winbush. He went around the back, and that was a hell of a bump pass. Holloway comes out. And BCC's had some great passes so far in this game, but they've just been unable to finish when they get the good passes. Yeah, that's too bad because they've been they've been outstanding. Three point shot, got a piece of it. Winbush, Hester needs to look up. Here comes Corey Green. Corey Green around the back. Vega, gonna tee up the three and he gets it. That's a big three right there. You needed that before the half. 
to cut it to within 12. Shot clock is off. Quincy College going to hold for the last shot here. It appears like for the first half. Yeah, you can see Dunkley telling his teammate, calm down, he's going to wait it out. Might try Five to get on a the pass game clock. Throw it up. Double team. Jumper from the free throw line. No good by Regis Caesar. Misses the shot. So, all right now. Big shot there by Zachary Vega to uh, close this uh, Quincy College lead to within 12. And that is it for the first half. 57 to 45, the number one team, Quincy College, coming in here 19 0 in regional play, 19 1 overall. They have a 12 point lead over your host, of the Bayhawks. Stay tuned, everybody, for second half action. It's Bayhawks basketball on FR Media. All right, welcome back, everybody. It's halftime. And we're ready to come back for second half action. Quincy Collins, the number one team in the country, leads the Bayhawks 57 to 45. Craig, what'd you see out there? I know BCC um, just trailing right now. Just not, they're just turning the ball over too much. And Quincy is just nailing a lot from the, out, from the outside right now. Yeah, BCC right now, they've had the passing ability and they've been great on the fast break. But it's really just when they slow the game down, it hasn't really been going their way. And when it comes to, you know, their passing, they've had great passes just They've been able, been unable to finish really on a lot of the ends, and as you said, just constant turnovers is really what's keeping them down right now. Right now, their leading scorer right now is Zachary Vega with 16, with Josh Wimbush right behind him. Um, again, seems like a quiet 16 though. Yeah, I think you can say that again. This this offense we've been talking about, it seems like they are like doing worse than they actually are in a way. Like it might be all the turnovers, and again, as you said, it's only a 12 point lead. This is a lead that can really go either way. They can easily come back out of this or this could get out of hand quickly. And we're getting ready to start the second half here with Quincy College with the basketball. And you're right, Craig. It seems like um, well, BCC is they are better when they're out on the break and pushing the ball off court before the other team's defense is allowed to set. And Quincy College will turn the ball over there. We'll turn the ball over there. And it'll be Bayhawks basketball. But BCC, when they get in the half court set and they're going against that zone of Quincy College, it seems like they're a little bit stagnant. There's a little bit of a give and go. And laid it in at the pass on Winbush. Perfectly executed play there. And BCC's down 10. <clears throat> as, you, as you said, like, BCC could have played a lot worse. They didn't play their best, but still they're sitting here down 10. Vega pulls up from short, from 15. Can't get it. The tip. Winbush kept it alive. Espinol. Over to Corey Green. Thought about it. Yeah, I thought he was going to put it up there. It seems like he had the time. And he's been doing good today. He's two for three from beyond the arc. And that's what you need to see from one of their best outside shooters. Another thing that we haven't mentioned, Craig, get some, we got a full stance here. We got a, we got a, a good we got a good show in here as we did Thursday for student night. But Quincy College travels well. And, um, and when you're the number one team in the country, you expect to see that. You go reverse lay-in, and Wimbush couldn't do nothing about it. You got to stop him on the baseline there. My old high school coach would have took me out of the game there. And there's a foul. It looks like it's going to be, well, we'll see who it's going to be. And on the bright side, at this point in the first half, BCC already had three fouls on them. So already they're not, uh, not, getting, not drawing too many or getting <laughs> too many. 1845 left, Mr. Salvador. Give him some time. <laughs> nice interior passing. And there's going to be a foul. The last foul was on, De, on DeJora Dunkley. This foul is going to be on number five, Devin Palmer. And that's his third. So he's starting to hit that danger zone. That's a guy that they can't miss right now. Yeah, he's been their best all around player. You know, he's been. A Amazing on the drive. He's been unbelievable from beyond the arc. So if they lose him, that's a big hit for this Quincy team. Yeah, especially given he's one of the only guys that can go in there and mix up with uh, with uh, Joshua Winbush, who hails a 6'7". Devin Palmer, 6'5". The foul is on Vega, and he is upset about it. Vega's third foul. It's the first team foul of the half. And 
Quincy does the same thing that we saw Gateway do. They uh, don't have anyone down low for the rebounds on the foul shots. And that free throw is good. Probably because they wouldn't have their defense set. Going back. Espinol drains the three. And that cuts the lead to within 10. Now we see PCC turning up that defensive intensity. It's a three-pointer, but it's drained. Man, how does he do it every time? Devin Palmer. With Winbush on him, Devin Palmer just puts it up over him and gets it to go. That's what I mean. These are contested threes. Ladies. Oh, a nice no-look pass from Holloway, and this time Vega connects on it. What a pass, no-look pass by Holloway. God, he's a good passer. Yeah, Holloway has been a true point guard in this game. His unbelievable passing throughout the game. Oh, nice little flip pass in the inside and getting it to go as you go. Number four to 34, Vega with the pass. I mean, Dub De Vega. Espinol pulls up for the short jumper, no good. Going back, Dunkley, oh, look at, like, look at that. Beautiful move to the hoop, to yeah. short Dunkley. Dunkley just absolutely breaking the defense, just no one could close down on him. And, and he gets the steal, and he's fouled by Holloway. Yeah, that's more the unfortunate foul than anything. It's Holloway's third. He kind of tripped up and just kind of fell into him. There really wasn't anything Holloway could do about that. All right, and it's uh, going to be a timeout called by BCC. Both teams have two team fouls. And that foul was Holloway's third, 68-53. to 53. So every time that BCC tries to close the gap just a little bit, cut it to within 10 or whatever the case may be, Quincy College hits a big shot like we've seen Devin Palmer. These, they're hitting contested threes. These aren't all wide open threes. Not like BCC is not getting out there to defend. You know, um, so Quincy College, every time that BCC tries to close that debt gap, Quincy College answers the bell. Yeah, this hasn't really been that much of a back and forth matchup. It's just kind of been like BCC will have a couple of good possessions, Quincy College will have a couple of good possessions, and kind of go back and forth on that. Yeah, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't even say like it's a game of runs. It's a game of maybe a little bit of mini runs. Quincy College, you know, BCC will have a couple good possessions, but then Quincy, but then Quincy College will go down and hit a big like dagger three, and it's just like, then it's, you know, then it's like a back to a 13, 14, 15 point lead. Every time, it's just a story of the game so far. Quincy College is having a little bit more better possessions. Yeah, Quincy College has been better on the turnovers. BCC's really, uh, that's really been their, really their, uh, their downfall right now. They've just been having too many turnovers. In BCC, they're not hitting the threes at the, at the alarming rate like they were in previous games, especially in the first half of the season. The difference in the game right now, Craig, is Quincy College is just unconscious from the three-point line. Yeah, BCC's bread and butter in the first half of the season was the three-point shot, and again, just it hasn't been there the second half of the season like it was in the first. Exactly. Nice entry pass. And now stolen away. Holloway needs to look up. Up to Vega. Ooh, and then he'll travel. travel. He'll travel. Looked like he didn't really have position in the ball. I was trying to get possession in the ball, but came down with it. And Yeah, I thought he might have gone out of bounds, but no, they're just – calling steps on him. Yeah, when he came down with it, just couldn't uh, couldn't get the ball to the floor. Yeah, Holloway, kept, kept walking. Holloway tried hitting him in stride, but it's too There's much momentum. There's a deep three. Dunkley coming off, tipped. Rebounded by Hugo. Hugo getting blocked by Winbush, and Winbush gets the ball. And a clean block at that. Holloway, no look pass to a streaking Vega. And Vega's going to, did they call a foul? Uh, yes, they did. I, did they call it on Vega? Yeah, they're going to call the smack. No, they didn't okay, call it. Okay, blue 10. It sounded like he said white 10. Yeah, that foul's going to be on DeJore Dunkley. That's his second. A lot of time here, 16 18 to play. And you got to hit your free throws. 
you got to hit your free throws, and you got to have quality possessions right now if you're BCC. Where's the defense? Where's that full court pressing action? Where's the double teams? Where's the um, where's that defense, that patented BCC defense that we've seen, kind of in your face, in your jersey? We haven't seen that, I, I, I think, in some time. Yeah, once their bench really started to get a little more depleted again, we just haven't seen the full court press the same way, and it might just be more guys getting tired quicker. And we're seeing more zone than we have in the past. As Dunkley gets it inside to Hugo, trying to handle it, somehow puts it up, up, puts it up and in with the left hand. How did he do that? Yeah, Hugo just had everybody on him, and just no one could touch him. Holloway back up to Espinal. Vega dumps it to, to Whitboys with the slam. Slam a jamma. Why can't you do that every time, Josh? Dunkley kicks it back out for three. Vega, Jonathan De Vega is good for three. One thing Quincy College has done, and this might get in uh, BCC's head, they've really shut down the crowd. Like the crowd not getting into it at all. Corey Green, the miss. Like the big with a nice hustle. Holloway, nice hands there by Winbush. Catches it, puts it above the glass, and in. What a pass by Vega, who hustled for the rebound. Hell of a hustle there. And then threw a bullet pass to Winbush, who, that was a great catch. And the put, and the put in, and he'll go to the line for three. And, um... That was a great hustle by Vega and great hands there by Winbush. And if you notice, Kamalu now has four fouls on him. 15 minutes left, it could be big. Yeah, and the free throws made by Winbush. Yeah, they get a couple guys in, there's a pick set. Going to the lane, Dunkley lays it up with the left hand, it's good over Winbush. And they're attacking Winbush now, it's stolen away. And that's something up ahead. Uh, Dunkley's been doing all game. He's been great on defense and caught BCC napping. Yeah, they're causing a lot of turnovers. Driving and kicking, driving and kicking. Vega couldn't stick it, though. That's what Quincy College does best. They drive to the hole. You have to respect the drive. And they're driving out. They're driving in and, and kicking it out to the perimeter. So they're shooters. Win Winbush, nice inside move. The spin, reverse lay-in is good. 75-61. Yeah, that's been Quincy College's game. Drive. Driving, kicking, and then sticking. And it's really been working for them. You see BCC playing zone. Just like that, they go to double and triple team people. They leave the man wide open from the outside. And Quincy, they've just been hitting their shots most of the game. Yeah, it's like where their rotations. Dunkley goes to the hole, and there's a miss. The BCC needs to capitalize now. 14 minutes to play. Who's going to step up? Oh. Inside, Vega, Winbush. From the pass from Espinol, and they left Winbush all alone. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how you leave Winbush that wide open down under. Yeah, they somehow left Winbush all alone under there, and it's 75 to 63 with 13.53 left to play. And here we are with a 12 point lead again. And after the last few possessions, Zachary Vega broke 20 again. He has 20 points in the game. Josh Winbush very close with 19. And again, it's been these two guys all season long, two of the higher scorers of this team. And again, still down by 12, so it's just been, a, as we said, just mini runs pretty much, just a game of mini runs. You know, once one team starts to go, right now BCC's got the momentum. Again, Quincy College can come back with one of those threes, though. Well, Quincy College caused a lot of, it's causing a lot of turnovers, as they did in the first half, and Quincy College got up to the... Uh, you know, get up to the quick start, get up to the lead. And really, Quincy College just been in control of this thing. BCC hasn't been able to sustain a run long enough, you know, to really, really, you know, cause a major breakthrough. Quincy College just is just playing their game. And, they're, and, you know, the Bayhawks have just been chasing them all night. A lot of it comes with uh, Quincy's defense, too, especially with DeJore Dunkley. He's so sneaky on defense. We have, he's caught in BCC napping when... BCC's not on the fast break, and they're just bringing the ball up. He'll just sneak up and get a steal, and then that'll cause one of the turnovers. And also, the Bayhawks, Craig, when you keep trading twos for threes, and there's a three right there, and that's no good this time by Palmer. Rebounded by Marcus Mitchell. 
Winbush going to the hole. Puts it above the glass and in. That's what you need. You need that man to step up right now. It's a 10-point lead. A lot of time left. And that ball goes sailing out of bounds. Big turnover. Yep, and if you're BCC, you get to you get to start causing these turnovers, you get, and you got to capitalize on them. That ball went flying out of bounds there. Oh, that's going to be a travel. Yep. Yeah, Mitchell thought about it, kind of stutter stepped on it, and yeah, it's another turnover. Yeah, it took about four steps without putting the ball to the floor. Yep. You know, and that's too bad. That's what I mean. Yeah, the momentum shifter, and the momentum shifts right back. Quincy College gets the ball right back. Yeah, you had what you wanted there. You had the ball. 10-point lead, had a chance to cut into that lead even more, and you turn the ball over, so just turn the ball over. Going inside, blocked by Winbush, clean. Mitchell to Malik. And they're gonna call a foul on Blue, they're gonna call a foul on Quincy College. Yeah, Regis Caesar with the foul. Regis Caesar. Another interesting name. Inside to Winbush. Couldn't stop him. And Winbush trying to get it rolling. Yeah, Winbush really showing his presence on offense, and he's doing what you've been saying he needs to do. And he's just been playing offense down low. He gets down low. He's not looking to pass. He's looking to score. Getting loud. Loud and proud. And there's a foul by Vega. Now, you know, you know, Craig, you know, I'm going to smack my hand on this one. I thought this crowd was mostly Quincy College. I thought they traveled well. But I think word is getting out on this BCC team that they are nationally ranked. They are not to be uh, taken lightly. They're going against the number one team in the country. BCC is a top 25 team in their own right. Top team in Region 21, top two team in Region 21. And this is a big game. And I think after student night, I think word getting out. So the hype is there. Both free throws made. Coach Rob Del Lue in his ninth season as the BCC head coach. He's been here since BCC's inception of a basketball program here in Region 21. And he's won a lot of games. I believe it was uh, last season, maybe may have been last season, but Coach Del Lue, what, over 100 games won. Yes, sir. Millie Kester, fall away. Eddie off the glass and in. Hey, there's the fadeaway. That's away. what I'm talking about, yes. Number 21. Like that number. Coming up on 12 minutes to play. It's getting hot and heavy. And this is the loudest crowd I think we've heard. That is louder than student night. This is louder than student night. Student night was all about but we're missing the Bristol Bayhawk. Oh, I know, as Caesar scores in the paint. Back to a 10-point lead. Nice no-look pass inside. Wimbush gets it stripped. Get a strip by Palmer. Vega always hustling, knocking that ball out of Darius Hall's hands. I could hear the floor burn coming off Vega when he hit the ground. <laughs> Crowd chanting defense, getting into it. As we broadcast from the France Gymnasium, right next to the beautiful campus of BCC. Well, Mitchell almost had the steal. Trap in the corner. Cross court pass, 10 on the shot clock. Got to do something with it. Crowd into it. St stolen. Mitchell going the other way. Lays it in. Eight point lead. BCC making Quincy do something we haven't seen too much in this game. They have ma making them take their time. Yuko in the corner gets it to De Vega, missed it. The putback, Yuko couldn't get it to go. Here comes Alex Holloway. Wimbush cross court pass, Vega for three, can't get it to go. And there's a travel, and BCC basketball. There eight points down. This is the first time in a while we've seen it less than 10. Yes, I mean, and there's a lot of time. You've got just under 11 minutes to play. I mean, you got 10.48 to play, a lot of time left to play. Wimbush 
Kicks it back out. Mitchell for three. Still can't hit from behind the arc. He's yeah. 0 for 3 out there. Yeah, Mitchell's struggling in the early going. Might just be trying to shake off some of the what rust. Is, what, is, what, is, what is Winbush doing? I don't know. He just, he just let, let him, him, he just he let just him let, go. He let Dunkley go to the hole. He's not in foul trouble or anything. 81-71 now after those two points. Green gets it in the corner. 13 on the shot clock. Mitchell gets it inside. Wimbush. Uh, offensive and foul they're on Wimbush. Call, they're going to call an offensive foul, and they're going to say that he... That's his third now. When he gets the ball in the post, looks like he might have pushed off. I think that's what the call is anyway. Offensive foul on Joshua Wimbush, number four. Tough one there. Catching it at the free throw line. Oh, nice block by Winbush. See, and that's Mitchell. what you got to see from Winbush down low. Green up the glass. Malik Hester puts it up and in. And count it. The crowd likes it. The bench likes it. Coach Robbie D likes it. Count it. 81-73. And now a chance to cut it to within seven. What about the game from Malik Hester? He is stepping up big time in this game. He's getting key minutes, and he's been making key plays. And he's one of the unheralded guys. He's one of the guys that played in the first half of the season. Then we kind of missed him for a few games there. But he's back. He's worked himself back. Misses the free throw, unfortunately. But BCC up by, down by eight. Going to the lane. Palmer puts it up. Foul on somebody. I think it was on Espinal. And Palmer from the perimeter, takes it in, somehow manufactures his way to the hole. Picks up, draws the foul. And that's the 15 foul on the home team, Bayhawks. Yeah, Bespinal's third foul. Next one puts Quincy in the bonus. First free throw, bounces up and in. Good to hear the, uh, the, Bristol, the Bristol faithful finally get it and start to, uh, start to taunt the, uh, the free throw shooters for the opposing team. Start to make some noise. This isn't a golf match, it's a basketball game. It's February, let's go. Second free throw was good. 83 to 73, 10 point lead for Quincy. Malik Hester thought about it. He's wide open. Yeah, he thought about it too long. Thought about it for way too long. Take the ball closer. Take it to the hole. You're wide open. That is just disrespect from Quincy. They don't even bother covering him on a shot attempt. Yeah, well, there's a miss there by Vega. Rebound up by, by Caesar. Get a block. Another block by Winbush. Mitchell. Kicking it out. Oh, that was a nice pass. Green can't get it to go. Mitchell hustling. New shot clock, new possession for BCC. Espinol on the drive, puts it up, lays it in. Nice drive. Espinol, you can do it, boy. That's a good job of Espinol. It's exploding towards, just exploding towards the hoop, just going for it. I feel like he could do that a lot more. Take it to the rack. Dunkley floats it up and gets it to go over Hester and Winbush. Nice take there by Mr. Uh, Mr. DeJour, DeJour, Dunkley. DeJour Dunkley. In the corner, Espinol. Oh, uh, what was uh, that? Errant pass, just not. Yeah. Winbush is tall, but he's not that tall. Yeah, I don't know what that was. Oh, what a pass. Well, that was a hell of a Palmer. pass. Quincy sets up there. And now. Yeah, Dunkley's just killing time. Now BCC in zone, but like they're matching up zone. Almost look like man to man. Kickball. And it's going to be BCC basketball. Alexander Hollow, Alex Holloway will come in. Alexander, Alex, don't call me Alexander Holloway. Winbush will come out along with uh, Corey Green in the game now. Alex Holloway. 
Mitchell catches the ball at the free throw line. Back in the corner, Marcus Mitchell trying to get it to go. Cannot hit from the outside. And Marcus Mitchell, such a, such a good shooter in previous action in his first game back after missing all the games here after the break, hasn't been able to buy a bucket from the outside. Yeah, like we said, it's the first time we've seen Mitchell in forever, and he just, he just got to get comfortable again out there. In the corner, jumper by Hall. It's good, and it's a three. And that's, uh, that's one of those threes that hurt. And Quincy College off that, bringing it back to 13. Espinol, down inside of Vega, lays it in. And that's what I mean. Every time BCC closes it to within 10 or 8, whatever the case may be, Quincy College hits one of these dagger threes yeah. to extend the lead. Yeah, it's like you said, just kind of trading twos for threes, and in the end, the threes are going to win. Yeah, because BCC is not hitting from downtown at all. No, they've only had Corey, Corey Green and Zachary Vega both got a couple each, but that's really been it. Again, Marcus Mitchell. Been There's very a cold steal. Outside. That's what you need. Mitchell gets it knocked out of bounds. Great hustle there by Darius Hall. So quick. Quick hands, too. Good job to come from behind and knock it out of bounds. Still going to remain BCC basketball, however. That's one thing we haven't covered too much. This Quincy College is very quick. They are very quick, and a lot of times, BCC is usually the quickest team on the court in most games that they play, and they definitely have met their match. This is one of the teams that really matches up oh BCC my athletically. God. Not a bad, bad inbound pass there from Holloway. Gets it stolen. Another turnover. BCC with a lot of turnovers. It's amazing that they are only down 11, given the turnovers that they've had. Deep three, no good. Rebounded by DeVega. Hall, nice bullet pass inside to Caesar, lays it in. 90 to 77. Hester going up. Yeah, Hester gets the foul, but man, did he hit the ground hard. Hester looked like a tight end, streaking down the court there, catching the ball. He's a big boy out there, 6'2, 225. Yeah, he's solid. Definitely a big, solid body. And Hester only a freshman. First free throw was good. I mean, he's a guy that can play either the three or the four. Hills from uh, Pawtucket, Rhode Island, went to Shea High School. Both free throws are good. And Hester giving a good effort, a great effort out there today. Dunkley brings the ball up. And shot clock problems. It's the, uh, it's the per usual, per game, uh, shot, shot clock problems. Shot clock problems. And it's 90 to 79. Shot, 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 shot. Okay, that's, that was like far out of my mind, but <laughs> to, to, um, to cover that situation there, but. That's probably going to be in my head now the rest of the night now. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody. 90 to 79. You can catch Lucy Cabral. I know this isn't live right now, but. On uh, you can still probably catch her, though. Uh, yeah, right. catch her anywhere. Where in the world is Lucy Cabral? Actually, on Tuesday nights, you can find her at open mic night at St. James. Lucy sings the national anthem. She's a. She's a co-host on the Dirty Water Sports Hour podcast. Producer. No shot, and foul she does on some great camera work. Espinal. Seven Eleven Lucy. <laughs> Seven days a week. No, twenty four seven. 7 Eleven. <laughs> she a convenience store now? It could be. <laughs> I want a slushy now. <laughs> All right, 5.45 to play. BCC down 11. Stepping back to three, gives him a little shake. No good. Hester grabs the rebound. 
and that's going to be yeah, that's, that's going to be, be a, that's, 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 that's going to be a foul on Quincy College. And looks like they're going to be that they're in the bonus now. BCC got to hit their free throws now. Down 11. Lo a lot of time left in. BCC can just hit their free throws and keep getting Quincy to foul, and they can come back from this. Yeah, but you need stops. You need stops on the defensive end. That's something that BCC hasn't been able to do consistently. Just, just because it seems like Quincy College is just nailing, they're just nailing their threes. Coming off, rebounded by Hester. Another rebound by him. BCC maintains possession. Holloway, oh, nice fake, puts it up. No good, another rebound by Hester. Goes up with it, puts it up off the glass, and in. God, what would, where would they be without Hester tonight? Hester is playing one hell of a game, I do gotta say. Keeping balls alive, getting offensive rebounds, and there's a foul. That's on Provitt. Provitt not giving too many fouls. And Provitt not on the on the offensive end really has uh, really has not shown up. It's been kind of stale on the offensive end tonight. We haven't seen uh, too much positivity on the offensive end from him. 5:13 left to play. 90 to 81. We'll take a break here. You're watching Bayhawks basketball on FR Media from the France Gymnasium at Bishop Conley High School in the river. Welcome back, everybody, to Bristol Community College Bayhawks basketball. I want to thank you all who joined us here on FR Media, channel 95 on your dial, and Fall River and the surrounding areas, 90 to 81. The number one team in the country in the NJCAA, Division Three, Quincy College Granite, have come up, have traveled up Route 24 to the great city of Fall River to face the Bristol Community College Bayhawks. Nationally ranked team in their own right. Top team in Region 21. One of the top teams in Region 21. Yeah, talk about the court being dead. We just, we really need new bleachers up here. I feel like <laughs> I need a roller. A roller. First free throw was made by DeJore Dunkley. I need to get one of those stadium chairs that you like attach to the bleachers and just yeah, sit on. Yeah, you might need to do that. Good investment. Second free throw is good. Five minutes left to play. 5.13 left to play to be precise. And BCC needs to keep possessions. Really the story of the game for me is BCC, they just have not been able to hit from the outside. And you know Quincy College, I mean, how many, how many three-point field goals do you think they've made? That's been a difference in the ball game. Oh, it's been so many. And again, it's just the turnovers like that. Again, that's been the other, that's been the biggest thing for me is just BCC's turnovers in yeah, this game. Yeah, turnovers at the wrong at the wrong moments too. Like right there, you needed a good possession and Wimbush lost it. Holloway guarding Dunkley. Dunkley going strong to the hole, loses it. No call at all. Well, they maintain possession of it. De Vega on the scoop, missed it. Gonna go BCC basketball. BCC needs to score here, no doubt about it. Yeah, 4.38 left to play, down by 11. Both teams in the bonus. Stop and pop, Green gets it to go. Boy, that was a big shot. Holloway with the assist, 92 to 83. Four and a half minutes to play. Nitty gritty time, single digit lead. Driving to his left, and he's gonna get fouled. And this is, this is the, um, with both teams in the bonus, we're gonna see some free throws. And that's going to be on Hester. That's going to be his third. Both teams have 18 fouls. Both teams in the bonus, as you mentioned. So free throws from each after each foul from here on out. First free throw was drained by 
Mr. Devin Palmer. Yeah, right now it's really the free throws are going to decide whether or not BCC gets back in the game or if Quincy just runs away with it. And Quincy College is, I mean, they, and they are fearless. They're a fearless going to the hole, and they make their free throws. They are solid from the free throw line. Yeah, there's not really much I can say about Quincy College that is bad. Like, they've just been <laughs> playing, like, you know, you just pick them apart, but they've just been playing good, fundamental, solid basketball this Take entire game. Take it for game. three. Can't get it to go. That's the story. BCC cannot hit from the perimeter. They are not the perimeter team that we've seen in past games. And definitely not today. Dunkley. And definitely not the last game that we broadcasted. Holloway starting to oh, get aggressive that. on that defense. Oh, look at that. The dish from Dunkley. Yuko going up. Nice defensive play by Vega. Corey Green for three. They need it. They got it. C, G, three. Cuts it to eight. Now you need a steal. Corey Green for three. Now you talk about BCC not doing too great from the outside. Corey Green doing pretty good. He's three for five right That's now. That's a deep three. No good. Pushing it is Holloway. Corey Green for heat three. Heat check. Heat Bang! check. He got it. Corey oh! Green with the heat check. C, G, three. Color of money, green. The crowd alive here. It's a five-point game with all the time in the world on the clock. This is the lowest lead we've seen Quincy College have. Going up, Yuko. And, and the there foul it is again. on Zachary Vega. This is maybe his fourth. Again, every time BCC comes scratching close, Quincy College comes up with a big play to kind of hold them off. But BCC's in this game. Seven point lead. Yuko Kamalu completes the three point play the old fashioned way. As they put this BCC crowd at bay for now with that three point play. Winbush, Winbush going to the hole, lays it in. Going baseline, lays it in, pretty move. Six point lead, two possession game, here we go. Saddle up, ladies and gentlemen. Dunkley, going at Wimbush, gets it stripped, knocked away. And staying for Ooh. Quincy though. They're gonna say, they're gonna say it went off someone's leg, and obviously it was a Bayhawk player. And if you're just joining us on FR Media, what? Crystal Community College down six against the top team. 12 on the shot clock, fadeaway three, no good. Tipped. Down to the ground, coming away with it, Vega. Jump ball, Jump see what's ball. going. Going BCC's going way. Going BCC's way. Two possession game, 224 left. This is a very, very big possession for BCC. Boom, 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 boom. Ba -ba -ba -bum. Be aggressive. Be, be aggressive. <laughs> That's my best cheerleading attempt. <laughs> you don't have to get you out in the crowd. Yeah. Going to the hole. But he traveled. I thought maybe they were going to call that. Too bad. That was a good pass there by Holloway, I believe. And that's been another tale to take. Alex Holloway has been getting a lot of good passes, but again, just either not able to finish on the other end or just turnovers. A lot of travel call turn, a lot of travel call turnovers, and Quincy College is going to call a smart timeout. BCC with all the momentum in the world. And Craig, not only has BCC turned the ball over, but they've really turned the ball over. On very way, key in, situations. Yeah, and, and in ways that could be prevented. Like not only have they had the ball stolen from them or just thrown bad passes, they've also turned the ball over by just traveling. You know, just, uh, you know, just plays that aren't aren't smart. Yeah, BCC not really been known to travel throughout the season, but today has just been really the exception. Again, you're seeing travel calls left and right and just keeps adding to the turnovers. And again, with that, that was a big possession. It's a six-point game, two minutes left. Quincy has the ball. Yeah. Two-possession game. We saw Corey Green start to go off from the outside. But again, you know, still a lot of time left. Still definitely capable of coming back, but again, BCC just got to get some key possessions and just not turn the ball over. And this is a key possession right here. They need a big defensive stop here. That's why Quincy College, they know that this is a big possession. They score here, you know. Yeah, especially if they hit another dagger three. Yeah, I mean, then that win probability goes up, but if BCC can stop them, 
I mean, on this possession, they're in business. You talk about situational play, you talk about situational ball. BCC needs a defensive stop. They need a turnover. You need to protect the perimeter. But also, you can't foul. You can't foul Quincy College too good from the free throw line. Not only that, Zachary Vega, one of the leading scorers, he has four. Winbush is getting up there in foul trouble, yeah, too. Yeah, you're still going to protect the rim. Dunkley. Coming back out. Caesar. Oh, where's the, where's the play there? The defense just defense just wasn't, wasn't there. Yeah, they try to double triple team players, and they just always leave one person yeah, wide open. A little bit that, of a miscue. Corey Green for three. Going to come up short. That's too deep. Winbush lays it in. Luckily, Joshua Winbush is there to clean up the mess. Still a two-possession game. You need a defensive stop. But BCC hanging right in there with the top team. Kamalu, where's the defense by Winbush? The phantom defense. Man. Holloway going up and under. Oh, what a beautiful move. And BCC still in this one because of that move. And some fancy moves by Alex Holloway. He's been the leading passer, but again, is dancing through the paint. A good move. I'd like Winbush. to see him do that more often. That's that. Oh, they're calling it a foul. I thought he traveled at first. I don't know why Joshua Wimbush is coming up. Protect it down there, protect that rim. It seems like every time when people, when players drive it at Winbush, he's trying to sidestep so he can try to get the block instead of putting his, uh, instead of uh, stopping ball, getting out there and, and making contact, not being afraid to foul somebody. Yeah, I don't think Winbush is even in foul trouble right now. You, you ever see like the, uh, the Matador? Yeah. Like the little Ole? Like, yeah. like, like, like he's got a bull like coming to him, like he's doing like little Ole with the little red blanket there. Come mm. on, man. Because he's literally like letting guys, like he's really like stepping aside, watching guys go to the hole. Yeah, it's been kind of inconsistent because we've seen him make really good plays. We've seen a lot of blocks from him, a lot of clean blocks. But again, then there's the other one, as you said, the phantom defense. So it's really a tale of two wind bushes right now. Yeah, and at a critical time when you need that defensive stop and you really can't worry about anything else, you're better off following them than just letting them go to the basket and lay it in. You can't afford that at this juncture. 59 seconds to play. It's a seven-point game. And it's kind of, it's a shame. It's, uh, I don't really know what to say. I really don't know what to say about this game. It's like BCC really hasn't played terrible, but they have turned the ball over a lot. You turn the ball over a little bit less. I think if they turn the ball over a little bit less, yeah, they'd at least be tied, definitely. They could even have the lead. Yeah, Quincy, yeah, and, and Quincy College has made some amazing shots, and BCC hasn't hit, besides Corey Green, no one else really um, a threat right now to hit from the outside consistently. Corey Green is your best shooter right now. Yeah, right now BCC, they're 7 for 17 from beyond the arc. <coughs> Corey Green himself is 4 for 7. And you said BCC is what as a team? They're 7 for 17. 7 for 17, that's not bad. And Corey Green with those back-to-back -back threes really brought BCC back into this thing. That free throw was good. Eight point lead. Yeah, less than a minute to play. Zachary Vega for three. Can't get it to go. Loose ball. Hester hustling. Oh, then he goes out of bounds. It's like another hard fall. And that's too bad because he's really been hustling, getting to loose balls and getting offensive rebounds, keeping possessions alive. Yeah, Malik Hester has owned seven rebounds with ten points. Yeah, see? I mean, he's done pretty well. He said probably his best game as a Bayhawk that we've seen. And they're going to call a foul on Damian Martin. And unfortunately, unfortunately, Craig, this um, the, uh, the clock is the BCC's biggest enemy right now, 45 seconds, and Quincy College really... Hats off to them because, I mean, that free throw made by Jonathan DeVega. Quincy College has played from with a lead. 
and they've been able to withstand anything that BCC has had to throw at them. Any, any comeback, they've diffused anything that BCC's, any, any window of opportunity, they've closed it, they shut the door on it, they shut the window on it. And both free throws made by Jonathan DeVega. 10 point lead, Corey Green in the corner. Holloway needs to have it, can't get it. Hester comes up, Wimbush takes, goes to the hole, can't lay it in, tipped. Man, now you need a three pointer. And they're gonna call, man, they're gonna call it off BCC. I don't think you need it, Coach. Nope, shot clock is off, up by 10. Stole it away. Steal. Good job by Holloway. Winbush dunks it. Now you need a foul. Now you need a foul. Now you need a foul. And they are not fouling. Should have had a foul a long time ago. But again, Quincy called just said, um, They've had solid possessions. They've like they've hit from behind the arc, especially at key moments, and they've hit their free throws. They've hit their free throws down the stretch. They've not blinked an eye, and it shows why they are the number one team. As they look to go twenty and one overall. Free throw was missed. Finally a missed free throw. Malik Hester for three. No good. You know, give him credit on the attempt. Going back the other way. And Quincy College won't even bother to uh, put up a shot there. And that is it. The final score from the France Gymnasium in Fall River, Massachusetts. 106 Quincy College to 97 over Bristol Community College. Here at Bayhawks basketball, the final score right there, 106-97. And the number one team in the country, Quincy College, the Granite. They extend their record to 20-0 in Region 21, 20-1 overall. The Bristol Community College Bayhawks fall to 18 and six overall. All right, so. Yep, I'll run down some of the stats, and I'm actually going to let you decide today who our Bayhawks player of the game should be. So right now, it was Josh Wimbush again, a good performance. Again, 29 points, a per usual. Zachary Vega was not too far behind him, 23 points. But I do want to point out Malik Hester had a great game, probably his best game as a Bayhawk. I think he really was the heart of this team tonight. He was I, I always like hustling. He was always rebounding. I do. Did a, he had a great, great, second, um, great second attempts down low, always rebounding putting back for two points. He just had a great game today. Yeah, I do feel that way too. I feel like Malik Hester really was like the, uh, the heartbeat for this team. I feel like, yeah, you had scorers like Vega and, and uh, Joshua Winbush and those guys, uh, Corey Green had a couple key threes to pull this team back to within, uh, you know, to, to get them within five, five or six or so. And those guys were also, you know, obviously key players. But like you said, Malik Muhammad Hester, that was on my mind. You read my mind. So I think he was the, uh, the heartbeat for this team, diving for balls, keeping offensive possessions alive, getting offensive rebounds, putbacks, and just uh, showing a lot of enthusiasm and intensity out there. So Malik Mohammed Hester is our player of the game, Bayhawks player of the game with 10.7 rebounds, but the stat sheet doesn't even show it. I think he contributed uh, to this team today. So BCC falling a little bit short. They did hang in there for a little bit, but the Bayhawks will drop to 18 and six, but they're still, they're still a, um, a, a top seed in uh, Region 21, and we expect, them to, we expect them to be there at the end. And we have one final home game um, for FR Media for the regular season, and that home game will come against uh, CCRI, and that is on February 21st as BCC goes on the road for three against Benjamin Franklin, Bunker Hill Community College, and that's, that's going to be a big game in Region 21, and Northern Essex. So BCC goes on the road for three, and then we have one final home game, and then it's on to tournament time. Yeah, getting to nitty-gritty territory, postseason play coming up. Yep, and that's it. So uh, be staying tuned for one last regular season game, and then it's on to the tournament time as we get, as we're, we're repping up for that. Okay, so for myself, Dave Cardoza, alongside with me, is the Portuguese, where, where are we right now? 847. Portu we are the Portuguese terror right now. All right, so for the C team, Cardoza, 
uh, Craig Salvador and Lucy Cabral. You've been watching Bayhawks basketball. Thank you very much, everybody, and good night. <laughs>